Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some well, fun. Nick Collier here again, and uh, we've got another project. And this one is kind of a cool project on my books, because back when I was uh, 18, I started uh, and did for, I don't know, five or six years, uh, a Harley Custom mm, Repair Shop. And... Uh, Probably during that time, I mean, there was a lot of choppers coming in and out of my shop. And during that time, I ended up with a bunch of these. And I don't know if you recognize them or not, but they are the front glide, uh, super glide forks. These are the bottom forks that, that carry all of the oil. And of course, the axle goes through here. There's two of them. There's the second one. My customer who has been is in the process oh and i'll show you some of the bikes that i built and my customer who who eventually wants me to rebuild these front ends springer front ends uh brought in this uh this super glide uh front end or electro glide i think is what it was called um hey kitty cat what you doing uh and uh wanted me to do that project so i'm going to show we're going to go back over there and i'm going to show you what we're doing so uh, i'll also show you a picture of the the bike that he's actually building he wants to go back to the original 1970s version chopper and uh and in order to do that you know we, we've got to go back to kickstart uh it's an old, uh, I think it's a 1947 knucklehead that he's working on. It's a cool bike. I haven't seen it, but I've seen pictures. Anyhow, so basically what we're going to do once the cat is out of the way. Cat, you're in the way. Do you know that? Come on. Jump, jump. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, cut off these brackets, cut off this bracket, and starting right here, we're going to, create a tubular taper all the way up to this uh, this um, seal mount or seal whatever. So basically we just kind of uh, put it in the lathe and trim all of this back. And now if you notice the end of this, and we'll bring it in close for you, you can see it's kind of egg shaped. So all we're going to do is just kind of make it round and taper it down to the bottom of that. The way we're going to do it is uh, more modern than what I did way back when. I must have done, oh, I can't tell you, a hundred of those for to, to customize motorcycles. Move, move. Anyhow, uh, and the way I did it back then is I put it in the lathe and I would bring the tail stock back over far enough that it would actually be that far out and then I'd turn it. So, but uh, since we have a taper attachment, I thought, why not use the taper attachment? And then I can make a, a bracket for this uh, if I ever in a you know, billion years do another set All of right. these. And our length is, bar she blows right there. Now we're gonna leave just a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other. So let's leave an inch on each side. And this is going to be our length right there. Let's take this to 470 and to 110. Okay, so we're going to take it over to the saw. We're going to cut it off here. And then uh, we'll come in and put some slots in this and then make them adjustable so we can adjust this thing back and forth until we get this correct We're going to take a little break here because my buddy Robert came over here and he's got this project that he's doing and uh, it just kind of blows me away how this, how he has answered the questions. And, you know, this is a great, uh, a great example of really being creative on how you do things. So he's got this little dinky uh, post he needs to take three thousandths off of it. Now, you know, how would you do that? You can't sand it off because it, it's hardened material and, or not hardened, but harder. And, uh, and so how do you do it? So he set up this, this bit in the bridge board and watch it do its thing. This is just amazing.
You can see the little chips falling off and it's taken off 2,000 or 3,000. <laughs> that is just about the coolest thing I've ever seen happen. <laughs> So uh, we'll get back to our regular whatever it is that I'm doing at this point, and uh, this was fun. <laughs> All right, so we've got our band cut. Now we need to put uh, a couple of fairly long grooves in here. Um, and we're just going to, uh, they can be random because of the, uh, the, um, let's see, let's bring this up. Well, now we can just leave it down. They can be random because uh, the uh, uh, bolts inside of or at, on the lathe are adjustable. So, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go the other direction a little faster. How about that? Okay. Uh, a little bit of oil on that. And basically we'll just go back and forth and just keep digging down until we punch through. It makes it easy. an inch all right well, okay pretty simple deal here we're just cutting the other side come up and cut just a little bit more of that top and I think that's plenty all right we got both sides cut let me dump the slash Okay, and again, you know, it doesn't really matter where they're at or how deep they're cut or anything like that because they're going to be used to give us a, uh, you know, a little bit of a taper. So I think what I want to do is come into this top edge and just maybe even flat file it. Just very carefully, just kind of get a nice even edge there. So let's go over to the bench and see. All right, well, we're going to use the file that one of my viewers made and sent me. It's just like a uh, spectacular file. It looks like a walnut with brass. Man, I'm just zapped about it. And I saved this just for special things because I don't want to wreck the file. Um, and so we're just going to square up all the edges, make sure that everything is nice and smooth. So we get a good reproduction of that straight line. That's pretty good. We don't have to go down all the way. All we're looking for is the contact. So I think I'm going to take it over to the bench right now and kind of round off these corners here just uh, just to make it make it uh, so nobody gets cut. All right, so we've got our uh, adjusters here, and uh, we're going to take off our old. Uh, die from a couple of jobs ago 
Put our new one on. Ah. And as I said, these things will adjust out however I want them. We're going to go out six inches here and six inches the other way. And I think we'll have what we want. Oops. Let's make sure we're on the right side. We are. Now, as you can see, it's a disaster back here. But I hardly ever come back here, so uh, <laughs> I tend not to clean it up. Okay, there's one side. Now, let's go back to the front and see what we can do about playing with uh, all the different things. We will put the live center in. Mm. Well, check that out. Because we've got a rotation there, the live center's not going to work. Can you see that? Let's get you in so you can see it. Boom. It moves all over the place. So either we bore this out and get an angle going on it, or maybe we bring the live center all the way in. Oh, in fact, that's even, I don't know, can you see it? Let's look inside there. That is a, a notched hole. So that's dead in the water. All right, well, Nick Collier, it's the next day. Uh, I went off and did about 19 other things. Now I'm back to this little project here. And, uh, and during that time, I just kind of let my mind relax. And I think I came up with a plan. It's not exactly a kosher plan, but I think it's going to be one that works. So here's what we're doing. We've come in. We've put the tube on the the actual shaft that it rides on when it's being a shock absorber and we've kind of bottomed it out and it's just slightly tight and now we're going to run a uh, pretty much a deburring tool in there to get just a pretty consistent uh, I think that's uh, 60 degrees it might be 45 but whatever it is it'll give us just some kind of consistency and then we'll be able to come in and hopefully put a center in there and and get that thing to flow somewhat evenly. So we're going to crank it up. We're going to run it and we're just going to kind of run it in really slow because there's not much holding it. See what I mean? But it's not going to hurt it to, to uh, stop once in a while. And it is tight. Can you see that? Let's bring you in closer. Oh, how about that? That's better. 
Okay, let's see. Come in even closer. Oh man, now we're really there. We're just gonna cut a cut a seat. And if the 45 doesn't work, then we'll go back in and cut a, a 60, but at least we've got a consistent start going. Let's see what it looks like. We're just a little bit shy of having a full radius there, so we're just going to go just a little further. pretty good. Yeah, we've got it all the way around now. All right, let's see what that's going to look like as far as bringing in our, uh, our center. It's not exactly what we want. I mean, it's certainly not going to hit everything, but I think it's going to be centered enough that's going to give us what we want, at least somewhat. And remember, this we're not going for a sharp or a accurate edge here. We're just going for uh, cleanup. All right, let's take it in. And I think we got something. Oh yeah. That looks pretty good. All right, we're going to stop there. And let's get another uh, view here. And we're going to start playing with uh, getting our uh, tracer attachment uh, hooked up so that it uh, has the narrow in in one side and the wider in on the other. So uh, we're going to back up and get you in another. All right, first thing we want to do is take it off that bar and get this inside of the, uh, um, the chuck. So we'll back this up. We'll bring this off. further come on there we go put this back away gonna grab it just real lightly and answer that phone. Okay, it's another day. We're back at this uh, and uh, it turns out that Alan didn't supply me with the cap to this and so what I'm having to do uh, and it, you know it's gonna be pretty simple is to just put a plate on here which I did and then find center and then drill a hole and put a center in there and, and use that as my center for cutting the rest of this, this off. All right, so I found center by measuring the, the, um, the radius of the, sh of the um, shaft 
and now and I got that center now what I want to do is find center the other direction by measuring the width of the shaft or the width of the boss here and we can do that right there so we're looking at one inch 510 so we're gonna go a half inch 250 250 and five and that should give us the halfway mark that doesn't look right at all okay so f half inch one two fifty there's fifty now that's eight well no we have to actually measure it okay i was just going to fake it and go halfway but then this plate who knows what this plate's doing Okay, so we've got one inch, 510. So we got want to go one half inch, 250, the six, seven, 50, and five. And that's a better measurement. Somehow I screwed that up, as usual. Okay, then there's our halfway point well. No, it's going to have to be the halfway point from here. Okay, there's a, a an edge that's actually showing. So we can go halfway from here. And there's our halfway point. And again, it doesn't have to be super accurate because if you'll notice, this is egg-shaped, and we're going to take the egg shaped out of it. And so whatever we end up with is whatever we end up with because this thing is very mm, you know whatever it's it's a rough cast so we've got our hole i think i'm going to take it over to the drill press drill the hole and maybe even countersink it all right drop it in Pretty close to center. At least one would hope. <laughs> Not too bad. Not too bad. We're going to go over to the lathe and see if we can hook this thing up. All right. Well, first thing we want to do is get this thing in the chuck. And uh, let's go ahead and bring our steady or our tailstock in just so we've got something to kind of lean against. And then we need to get our uh, aluminum chips in here because this is a fairly critical surface. <clears throat> I mean, not accuracy-wise, but uh, a rubber uh, seal goes in onto that surface there. So we want to have it protected so that it doesn't get banged up. Something like that. Okay. And tighten this up a little bit. Now let's see how it's going to spin. Can you see um, both sides? Yeah, pretty good. Well, as you can see, this thing's... As you can see, this thing's lumping all over the place, right? But we're going to come in right to this point and see what that's doing. And I'm going to swing you around. Okay, here. so we're going to look right at the inside edge right there and see that it's pretty accurate. I mean, it's running pretty straight. It might be five off or ten off or something like that, but we're not worried so much about that because as long as that's close, all of this is only uh, to make it pretty. 
So um, I think we're pretty well set to go. Okay, we're going to look at this, and this is, uh, this is the problem. You can see uh, how much it's cut in right there, and on this side, it's, I'm not even touching. Now, the thing is centered in the hole up on top here, but the tube is not centered. So we need to move this thing over this way by an eighth of an inch. And that'll center this whole thing out this way. So uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and weld up that hole. Move everything over an eighth of an inch. And I measured across those bolts to get my right measurement. And then re-drill it. So we'll be back. And now that we can, I think what we'll do is build this up a little bit so we get a nice wide uh, center. That looks pretty good, pretty easy. Let's. Uh, can you see it? Yeah. We'll take it over to the uh, to the drill press and drill that baby out one more time. All right. Let's give it a shot. And see what we can come up with. This thing might walk around a bit. That's the problem. Yeah, we'll just give it a try. No. Yeah, it's going to walk around like a champ. So I think what I'm going to do is take it over to the grinder and just grind that top so that it's flat. gives us what we want I think all right well remembering that we're trying to get as close to zero as possible but not we don't have to be on the money check this out so we come around here it's hitting here and not hitting here if we got that eighth of an inch there but it's hitting there so I think we actually have a little bit better action going here I'm going to have to take a cut or two and see what uh, what we've got. That seems a little far away there. Okay, to see where we're going to land, we can't use the uh, the old metal anymore, so we're going to have to put uh, a little dicom on here just to kind of get an idea of what what's going to happen.
first thing we're going to do is just give it a spin. Maybe what we're going to have to do is make these slots adjustable and then just tap it into place and then tighten the bolts and get it to uh, get it to uh, adjust from there because this thing is totally off from this thing. So uh, back to the drawing board. Well, okay, I've been you know searching through my brain trying to come up with some exotic way to deal with this this clip issue and uh, I all of a sudden thought oh wait a second maybe plugging the interior would work and so I went back to that original piece that I cut I you know three or four days ago and I you know just kind of stuck it in there just as a chance and damn it if it doesn't work oops the other way no that's the way damn it if it doesn't work just about perfect so uh, we're happy in there nice and snug it's there's no play it's dead center on the on the piece itself so I think we've got ourselves a ball game once again and we'll take this out that's good bring our center in so that it kind of supports it a little bit Somewhere in there. Bring our chuck down. Put the first piece of aluminum in. Second piece. And third. That's going to work just fine. Let's see what that looks like. Oh man, I think that's the number. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see most of it. Bring in our taper attachment. 